Welcome back and welcome to Gamma Ray, uh, Gamma Ray TV, presented by Skybound and Nong Shim, um, the makers of those hot, hot nudes, hot noodles. Um, Thank you. This is the Tights and Fights stream. Tights and Fights is a podcast on the Max Fun Network, which is hosted by myself, Danielle Radford, with uh, Hal Lublin, and with Open Mike Eagle, who can't be here today because he's too busy being a pitchfork, being a super famous, very talented rapper. Ugh. I, th I thought you were going to bury him just now. Oh, no, this he's is too busy being a musical <laughs> genius. That's how I bury him. That's what I do. Good when friend. I that's a good friend. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good friend. Who does that? Who, uh, Who? My album was on every top ten list last year. <laughs> so, yeah, he's too busy being a genius. Um, so he couldn't be here this weekend. But who we do have, um, I am so incredibly excited. Y'all know, <laughs> know him from Lucha Underground. Um, welcome, Marty the Moth. Thank oh, hello, you hello. so much. And uh, uh, thank you. Thank you for joining us. We are so excited to have you here. Uh, we were playing some video games earlier. Yes, it was amazing. We played some video. Uh, I, uh, I, am, I, was, I was not good. <laughs> Neither was I. I'm not <laughs> saying I didn't win, but dang. Um, it was great. No, it was fun. We had played Mario Kart on the Switch. Yes. And it, those, that controller is super, super small, but we all handled it. We rocked it, right? Yeah. Did yeah. you do that thing that everybody does when they play a racing game where you move your entire body as you're steering? Isn't that how you play the game? I think you have to. That is how you have to play the game. The, you have to do it in real life. The government's watching us all the time. If we're not moving along with those controllers, then they won't know to tell those cars to move. Well, I just actually went to the Purge City event here at Comic-Con, oh. so I know all about the NFFA and the government um, doing things. I was drinking your water, by the way. It was great. It was good. Is that Purge thing the one where you can go into a room and murder somebody and they won't arrest you for it? <laughs> Secrets. We bring you the secrets here. That's what we're about. Secret. You're not supposed to say that here. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yes. Uh, gosh, I am. I am so excited to have you here. I'm like bursting. Um, so tell me a little bit about yourself, your life. How did you get into wrestling? When did you watch wrestling when you were younger? Tell me everything. Just give me the gap. Oh, okay. Tell the story of your life. Yes, yeah, story of your life. I, I like long walks on the beach. <laughs> I do. It's very fun. I, I'm from Salt Lake City, Utah. Well, mostly West Jordan, Utah, actually. Um, born and raised there. I went to private school my whole life. My parents, like, really wanted to have a good kid. They screwed that up. <laughs> um, I, uh, I actually saw wrestling my first time at my grandparents' house. My grandpa was a big fan of wrestling. Um, and same with my uncle. And uh, I saw... I remember sitting specifically, and I'll tell you why it's important later... Uh, but at my grandpa's house, leaning against the wall, I'm like, there's like nine guys beating up this one person. That's not right. And I'm like getting all like into it, like, stop it. There's, there's nine of you. Stop hitting that person. It was like the NWO versus somebody, and they were just beating somebody up. Um, long story short, that was my first time uh, seeing wrestling. Uh, I actually, my grandpa unfortunately passed away about nine months ago. I bought his house to keep it in the family, so... Uh, I actually realized it just the other day that, oh gosh, I can lean right here on this wall and I can see the exact point that I actually saw wrestling for the first time. So I thought wow. that was kind of fun to see. Wow. Uh, um, that's amazing. Yeah, so that's how I saw wrestling. Um, I was a stockbroker for Fidelity Investments. So it's a bro stock brokerage firm. Um, how long were you a stockbroker? 10 years? 10 years? 2003? 10 years. Wow. Wow. Yeah, Past 10 years, something past that. <laughs> yeah, I, I got the job in 2003, 2005-ish area. Mm -hmm. It was over 10 years. I was a stockbroker for Fidelity Investments, then I worked for a bank before <laughs> that. I was working in the finance industry and then decided I really like being in spandex and kicking people in the face. <laughs> and so uh, I stopped being a stockbroker and decided to do that for a full time. What, so. Was there a, a point where a switch turned on where you were like, I, I, I'm clearly doing the wrong thing, and you sort of think back to that young Marty who you were pulled in by storytelling. Yeah. Like immediately it made you feel something and you were connected to it and wanted to take action. Absolutely. What, what, what was the next turning point where you were like, I'm, I'm going to go do this. I, I have to go figure out how do, how do I get trained? How do I, get, how do I become part of the world? To be honest, I started first at a show called WWE Tough Enough. <laughs> Um, I remember in 2011, that. I was on a show called WWE Tough Enough. Uh, MW Healer 1987 says I should have won Tough Enough. I agree with you, and I was Black Yoshi earlier on that, so I thank you for continuing back on. <laughs> I believe that was you. That was. Um, but that's actually Can the I? moment where I realized, like, I could 
do this full time and for a, a living, and I'd actually be way more happier than talking about people in their 401ks. So uh, during Tough Enough, um, I was doing pretty well. If, if you guys watched it, I never got on the bottom three, and then I actually en- ended up breaking my leg, and I ended up having to get metal in it. But that was in the moment, like, I was this close to, to wrestling full time for my life. So. Uh, the whole time after I broke my leg, Stone Cold Steve Austin said like, oh, you would have won if you wouldn't have broke your leg. So I'm like, you were the guy who said who won to the show. So if you would have said I won, I would have won. But, um, but he said I was, I was going to be good or said that I would have done good if I wouldn't have broke my leg. And uh, I just started working my butt off to make it happen after that. Like that was the turning point right there. It was tough enough. Like, oh, you had it. You touched like... The living there full time for fun, and then you got taken away from you. So, did you get in? Did you get into tough enough? Like, was that just you saw an open call and you were like, "All right, I'm gonna do it." Like, what? How? How? How do you get involved in that? Absolutely I'm just not. Keep digging until we get back to the day of your birth. <laughs> no, right now we're going backwards. Well, nine months before that, there was an accident. <laughs> and here I am. A man and a woman who were sort of okay with each other. Hey, they sort of okay at least for that hour. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> um, I'm sorry. One more time. Oh no! How, how did you get involved in Tough Enough? What was that? I actually, so in I, I again, I was from Salt Lake. I am from Salt Lake City, Utah, and uh, in there, there's not a huge wrestling scene. There is the school that brought me up, and that's essentially the the Utah wrestling scene. So the WWE never comes and does Monday Night Raw or SmackDown in Utah at all. They just skip us. So I really tough enough happened. I'm like, I can make this happen. Wow. So I started flying myself to California. I flew myself to Texas. Um, I flew myself to Colorado. So I just started going to as many shows as possible and flying myself out there to work extra work there. And then one time the big show um, saw him and he's like, I saw you in California, right? I'm like, yeah, yeah. We're in Texas. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know. But I saw you in Colorado last week. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> So where are you from? I said, oh, well, I'm from Utah. Why are you here? I'm like, I, I want to make it in wrestling. So he's like, come here. He brings me in. He talks me to the uh, talent relations guy at that point and says, ah, this guy just flew four different states to come be here. So give him a tryout. And that's what kind of happened. It kind of started that way. And uh, they, they, I got on their radar that way. And uh, when Tough Enough came out, I didn't want to do anything like, I, I, want, I didn't want to do the voting thing everyone was doing at the time, whatever. I just, but I didn't actually put in for it. They actually hit me up on Facebook, like, hey, we're from Tough Enough. We really wanted to put you in the, uh, as a video. I'm like, okay, cool. And uh, this probably totally is up from somebody. If, some, if I hit you up on social media and say, hey, I want to put you on a TV show, do you believe me? Because I've never heard of you in my, my like, <laughs> right. listen, I, that's what I was experiencing. I'll get into the van, but there better be candy. There you go. That's See? my rule. And maybe one window, like at least this big. Yeah, yeah. just a little, like a porthole. Porthole. Like, so that all they can see is your screaming mouth. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> but anyway, he sent me a message on Facebook, which made me not believe him. And then he said, hey, I'm from Tough Enough. I'd like you to be on the show. You're on WWE's radar. And I was on WWE's radar from flying myself out to all these places. And, uh... I said, screw it, and I put in for it, and uh, I, that's what started my Tough Enough career. And honestly, I think without Tough Enough, I wouldn't be on Lucha Underground, which makes the happy ending to the story. Um, <laughs> where I, I, I touched it, I was close enough, and then Lucha Underground came along, and I was able to start here asking Dario Cueto to be part of the temple, and then now we're here and I'm torturing people in dungeon rooms and stuff. So Yeah, you sure are. <laughs> <laughs> um, you definitely, definitely are. Oh, Della, Stella. No, thank you. Um, so, <laughs> um, so you, um, aside from obviously Lucha Underground, I know y'all are also in other promotions as well. Can you tell us a little bit about where else you're working? Um, yeah, usually I go over to AAA in uh, Mexico. Heck yeah. Um, we did Triple Mania last year. It's almost coming up now. Uh, AAA, I, I wrestle every week somewhere. So it's like, which one do you want to talk about? It's fun. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so I've been doing a lot of wrestling. Really, though, I've been kind of focusing on my YouTube channel, to be honest. Tell us about that. What's, uh, uh, what's going on on your YouTube? Well, um, I wrestle every weekend, so I just bring a camera along with me. And there's a lot of people interested in how, what happens to a wrestler and what does a wrestler do right before they get out on stage. Mm-hmm. So that's what I kind of show on my vlogs as far as, hey, here's me traveling. at It's 5 in the morning. I'm getting up and going on a flight. And the progression to now I'm in spandex and ready to kill people. Oh, wow. That's, so it's literally just like day in the life, like... I literally call it a day in the life of wrestling. Oh, that's so, fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. A day in the life. Nailed it, yeah, nailed, that, nailed it. Boom, nailed boom, it, boom, boom. It. <laughs> it's great because we, you know, as fans, you hear about what life on the road is like. Like, you hear stories about it. So to actually see somebody documenting it as it happens, that's like a great... There's nobody else doing that. So you should go check out it's that YouTube fun. channel. It's fun. I try and be nice so I don't show all the stupidity because you obviously don't want to see me like um, and hanging out. But and it's uh, your story. It's my story. Your story. And it's my story. So if I want to go, Bleh, I'll do that. Yeah. <laughs> um, what is the name of your channel? Uh, YouTube.com slash M-R-M-A-R-T-I-N-C-A-S-A-U-S. Mr. Martin Casals. Literally, if they Google Marty the Moth, I'll pop up. I'm the green guy with a creepy face. Green guy with a creepy Green face. Green guy with a creepy face. This is it. It was a born with it, so I'm sorry. I was born with it. Um, so, so many people have also um, talked about how f- funny you are. Not just like that you're so good. Just not that you're so good at just the wrestling part, but you're also able to bring comedy um, kind of into your wrestling. How did you start with that? <laughs> to be honest, it's my mother. She's crazy. Yeah? But she's crazy. She's a cartoon straight up. If you, if you, anyone ever meets my mother, I, I highly encourage watching my vlog so you can see my mother. I put her on my last vlog, and I had to sit down and have a... We're going to watch the vlog together. Here we go. It, this is okay, right? <laughs> it's happened already, so... <laughs> she's fantastic. She's great, but... and. Her personality of just being a goof, as well as the I love cartoons. I've always wanted to be a cartoon. Always. I'm wearing a Superman shirt for heck's sake. Um, so I, I just saw, I watched so much Animaniacs. I watched Looney Tunes. The Mask, for Jim Carrey back in the 90s, back when he was all insane, was like my thing back in the day. So I just always wanted to be a cartoon. So Lucha Underground, you need to come out for the cartoon. I think so. I yeah. think so. I'd watch I'd the crap out of that. I'd watch 100%. the crap out of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also you could do it without hurting yourself. Oh, I would love that very much. <laughs> I would love that very much. Just, uh, just the talking and not so much the falling at the ground. Oh, it's so much fun. When I, I got seven staples in my head from the Weapons of Mass Destruction match in season three. Yeah, that's a hard one for me to watch. I'll Is be, it? I, I think it's, because um, I once it starts getting too real, it's also like I don't like UFC. Like I like, um, <laughs> I like my fights fun and predetermined. I don't uh, like people who yeah. are actually trying to hurt each other. I like when people are protecting each other because they're friends. Like, uh. that's, the kind of, <laughs> that's the kind of fighting that I like. So when I watch those, I know that obviously y'all are really careful and you know what you're doing, but the weapons of mass destruction matches, those are the ones where even I'm like, ooh, that's, it's so much. Oh, me too. I haven't showed my mom that one yet. Yeah, don't. Yeah, I probably shouldn't. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, um, so we're going to get ready to wrap it up here pretty soon. Um, is there any, you have any last questions that you want to ask? I mean, I could talk to you for 900 hours. Literally. Talk to you for 900 hours. Come on, let's just be close just to each other. I just, just want to hold you. Y'all, uh, just hey, Tights and Fightsers, I, I need to document this auto. Like, right now, they are snuggling. In- they it's are a full embrace. Wine. They are cuddling. This and is so Tights next- and Fights, right? Yeah. I get in tights and I fight. And yeah, and this is I okay. Love- this is okay. Okay, so yeah, tights and fightsers. Um, we're gonna go ahead and just keep that in our hat forever. Just how yeah. loving up all over Marty the Moth. You're welcome. Oh, I'm so happy. It's su- such a tender embrace. I can say right now that I feel like I've reached another level of humanity. Just be. Oh, happy. it was just such a good cuddle. <laughs> I'm so happy, <laughs> guys. This is the best weekend ever. Um, so thank y'all go so Comic-Con. much. <laughs> is there any any last things that you would like to say before we wrap up? Number one, I love these guys. I love this whole weekend. Like San Diego Comic Con is, I I've never been here, so I'm excited like a little geek. I love this place. I'm excited. Everyone's out being themselves, dressed up, having fun. Thank you, fans and wrestling fans, for being part of Lucha Underground and San Diego Comic Con. Uh, follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Martin Casaus. Go to my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Mr. Martin Casaus. Just look up Marty the Moth. You'll see the green guy with the creepy face. 
Awesome. And uh, once again, you know, we're, we're uh, Tights and Fights in the Max Fun Network. Um, so make sure that you follow us as well. And after this, stay tuned for the next stream. Um, I'm going to have to look this up because I wrote it down because I'm trying to be a very responsible host. And we're, so we're going to have the creative team of Summoner's War. Um, so make sure you stick around for that. Thank you once again for checking us out here over on Gamma Ray, brought to you by Nong Shim, them hot, hot nudes. Um, and we'll see you soon for Summoner's War. Hot, hot nudes. <laughs>